Well, good morning. Uh, we're out here for our uh, terminal countdown demonstration test uh, for STS-122. We're looking forward to uh, launching in uh, just over two weeks. Uh, we're really excited about the mission. Uh, we're going to take Atlantis up, uh, go to the International Space Station, uh, rendezvous and dock, and uh, bring the Columbus module. Uh, hopefully uh, install it successfully without any troubles, uh, do a couple of EVAs, and get the module activated and uh, the payloads uh, up and running so that uh, when we leave, uh, we will have uh, greatly increased the space station's capability for uh, research for the future. Uh, I'm going to let the uh, the crew introduce themselves, but uh, we're looking forward to a uh, hopefully a very smooth mission. Uh, we know that uh, assembly missions are always a challenge, and a lot of things come up that we don't expect. Uh, we've got uh, at least one day of uh, extra margin where we can uh, react to uh, little things that come up that have to be dealt with uh, in orbit and take the full advantage of our uh, capability with the shuttle Atlantis to uh, get as much done as possible and leave the space station uh, better than we found it. And I'm just going to let the crew uh, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what they're doing on the mission. Hey, good morning. My name is Alan Poindexter. I'm the pilot on STS-122. It's uh, absolutely wonderful to be back here at the Kennedy Space Center. We're looking uh, very much forward to our terminal countdown demonstration test tomorrow. And also, uh, we're looking very much forward to coming back in just a few short weeks for our launch count. Atlantis is a beautiful ship, and the folks here at the Kennedy Space Center have done a wonderful job preparing it and getting it ready for this flight. And we're uh, really excited about the opportunity to go flyer. And I'm going to pass the mic down to uh, the next crew member now. Good morning. Uh, my name is Leland Melvin. I'm Mission Specialist 1, and I'll be working with the uh, Canada Arm 2, the robotic arm. I'll be installing the Columbus module, and we're going to be growing the space station by another module, and uh, ESA's contribution to the space station is going to be a uh, reality. And uh, I'm also on the flight deck working with Dex, uh, Steve, and, uh, and Rex, and we're looking forward to having a very successful flight, and uh, just looking forward to it. Here's uh, Rex. Rex Walheim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leland. My name is Rex Walheim. I'm Mission Specialist 2. So on asset and entry, I sit next to Leland, and we help uh, Dex and Steve with the vehicle systems. And then uh, during the mission, my main job is spacewalking. So we have three spacewalks on the plan, and if we need to, there's a potential that we could uh, get another one. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, doing our uh, dress rehearsal here uh, tomorrow and coming back in two weeks. And the folks at the Johnson Space Center have uh, trained us real well, and we're happy with all the great work that the Kennedy Space Center folks have done getting our vehicle ready. Next is Hans. Good morning, Hans Schlegel, European Space Agency astronaut of German nationality. And for us Europeans, it's a, a special event. Bringing Columbus up to orbit and attaching it to the International Space Station, it is Europe's biggest contribution to that International Space Station. And we are really looking forward to it, uh, all in Europe. Uh, for me personally, it's an honor, it's a duty, and it's a joy with this team to bring up Columbus and activate it in orbit. My personal role is, besides 2EVA, mainly going inside Columbus and outfitting it and activating it. To my left, Dr. Stanley Love. Thanks, Hans. I'm Stan Love. Looking forward to my first space flight on this wonderful ship behind us. I'm going to be mission specialist number four on the flight. I'll be operating the shuttle's robotic arm to do our thermal protection system inspections twice during the flight. Be helping Leland Melvin with the station arm for installing Columbus and going outside with Rex for one of our spacewalks. For ascent and entry, I'll be riding on the mid deck with Hans and with Leo Iarts. Hi, I'm uh, Leopold Iarts from the European Space Agency and uh, from France. Um, I will be mission specialist number five for the STS-122 mission. Uh, I will be one of the Columbus specialists, of course, and uh, SSRMS operator too, to, together with uh, Leland during the 122 mission. And then I will become a member of the Expedition 16 um, ISS uh, crew, uh, replacing astronaut, U.S. astronaut Dan Tenney. Uh, my stay would be about, about three months in the uh, ISS, coming back with uh, mission 123, uh, next mission. And uh, of course, I'm uh, very proud, very, very happy uh, to be in this uh, mission, as Hans said, which is very, very important for, uh, for Europe. And um, looking forward to go and uh, work in the 
in the shuttle and in the ISS. All right, and uh, with the introductions, we'll be happy to take any questions uh, you might have. Hi, good morning. I'm Sandra Frederick, Daytona Beach News Journal. Um, Commander, you, uh, could you elaborate a little bit on the introduction? You made a comment that December uh, launches can be challenging. And also, being that it's near Christmas, do you plan on anything special while you're in, the, in well, space? Well, the, uh, the launch, uh, every shuttle launch is challenging. Uh, I don't think ours is any more challenging than the others. Uh, just the inherent nature of space flight and how difficult it is to get up successfully into orbit, uh, get this huge stack you see behind us there, uh, weighing a couple million pounds on the ground, uh, get it up to orbit, going uh, 17,000 plus miles an hour. That's really the challenge. Once we get up there, most of the uh, challenging and hopefully the riskiest part is done. Uh, from then, we're just executing the plan that we've practiced. We've practiced all the major parts of the mission many, many, many times, and uh, all the folks on the crew are, are experts in the tasks they have to complete. Uh, regarding the launch date, uh, so far we're looking uh, right on schedule for December 6th. Uh, the folks here at the Kennedy Space Center have done just a phenomenal job getting the vehicle ready. They had a really, really tight schedule uh, since the last flight of Atlantis to get it all turned around and checked out and ready to go for our launch date. Uh, and they're ahead of schedule looking, looking great for December 6th. The real challenge was on the, uh, the station side. Uh, they've had a trim, uh, just a ton of work to get done since uh, STS-120 just flew bringing Node 2 up. Uh, the station crew, Peggy Whitson and her crew, has had to get Node 2 relocated and outfitted, uh, all plugged in and configured for us because we have to dock to it when we get up there. And uh, they had a real challenge put to them with the additional tasks they had to do on STS-120 to fix the solar array, got a little behind schedule, had to do an extra EVA during their increment, but they've caught back up and they're looking great now for December 6th. Uh, so we just hope they get a chance to get their work done and then rest up a little bit before we get there because every time a shuttle shows up, it's just a whirlwind of activity on the station and uh, we don't want to beat them down too much. We go up all fresh and then leave just 10, 11 days later and they still have months to go. So uh, we're just going to do our best to make it easy for them and get our job done. I'm Patrick Peterson with Florida Today with a question for Rex. I was wondering that if in the last couple of days you have done any extra uh, homework or study or had any more information about what might be required for a spacewalk to inspect the uh, Solar Alpha rotary joint and um, how you're looking at that now. Well, uh, we are looking at that, but mostly it's the extra teams that are working that whole issue of what to do with the Solar Array rotary joint. So we have a lot of smart people uh, uh, back at the Johnson Space Center and other NASA centers looking at what's the best thing to do. So I've been following via email what they're thinking of looking at. And uh, also when we had a few extra minutes in the, in the neutral buoyancy lab, our big pool we practice in, I've had a chance to go look at some of those work sites and kind of try to anticipate how we would do some of those activities. So there's still a little more training to do, but we really have to let that plan uh, get fleshed out and uh, firmed up and decide what exactly it wants to do, and then they can train us on the exact specific tasks. But we've kind of seen the overall uh, look of uh, some of the work sites we might be at, but we still have some, uh, some more work to do. Stéphane Corvaya pour la presse francophone, pour Léopold. Léopold, pouvez-vous décrire l'entraînement que vous effectuez actuellement euh, L'entraînement que je fais actuellement est plus euh, orienté vers le, la mission de, de, de la navette spatiale, donc euh, les, premiers, euh, les, disons, les deux premières semaines de la mission. Donc c'est surtout le, la préparation pour, pour le vol lui-même, pour euh, l'installation de Columbus, les connexions et l'activation de Columbus et ensuite la reconfiguration du, euh, du module. Donc euh, les dernières semaines sont essentiellement consacrées au, au travail à proprement dit sur la mission du shuttle. Sachant que vous ne, re, vous ne connaissez pas la durée complète de cette mission, comment prenez-vous cette situation Ça fait partie de, disons, des, des choses intéressantes de la mission, c'est qu'on ne sait pas exactement euh, quand elle commence, on sait qu'on va partir le 6 décembre en principe, mais ce n'est pas encore sûr, et on ne sait pas exactement non plus quand elle va finir, donc pour moi le vol va durer entre, entre deux et quatre mois, donc euh, je crois que c'est euh, un aspect intéressant, mais je, mais je suis prêt à toute éventualité.